mystery, intrigue, only here at the Gate Chronicles. Pretty self-explanatory. There was a gun that could make plants age up and age back. That's not self-explanatory. But it went into a big magic power reactor, which made it go critical. Why? And then everything what? aged uh, forward and back, even everything itself. Wait, which is time. why? And you then see the words on the screen appear. Hello, Charles. Oh, I don't, I don't like you. Don't worry. Mother is watching. Who, who are you? Hello, foundlings, and welcome back to another episode of The Gate Chronicles. This is Chronicle 1, Chapter 62. (laughs) My name is Emily. I am your Game Master host and DJ for this series session episode, uh, the programmer intelligent life form, um, creator of cute robot androids and, and so on. But I am joined at my table today by my two only players who are sitting across from me. As always, it's it's per our ritual customs. I think it'd be weird if we sat next to you at this point. So I am one of said players sat across from my GM. I am Quentin Ott. I play Charles Smoot, 57-year-old biology teacher, born and raised in upstate New York. So excited to have his good friend pal, completely regardless of whether or not he remembers I'm his good friend Smoot. Uh, and my name is Jaden, and I play Finnevere Veer, the roguish bard or bardish rogue. Uh, good luck figuring that one out. Pathfinder 2E's mechanics are interesting. <laughs> He's a guy who does <laughs> things on a journey. <laughs> he has things he wants to do. Stuff. Big things. Maybe. Or he'll die along the way. One of the two. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that, that's an intro, all right. Um, I don't know <laughs> if Finnevere is okay mentally or emotionally right This now. character <laughs> intro was brought to you by ChatGPT. <laughs> Uh, it was not. Or is it? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Good luck finding out. Let's get started. Yes! The facility is a ruin, and danger lurks within. That is one more thing the party became certain of after engaging with a circuit of seemingly corrupted robots. Androids? I'm not sure what to really refer to them as. I just know that they were mechanical, electronic, and a bunch of other things. I'm not smart. More disturbing, however, was what lie in wait for our intrepid adventurers at the base of the facility. A recording from Dr. Rift, along with a mysterious message from someone called Mother. With the chilling discoveries looming over our party, we now find ourselves in a somewhat bittersweet moment. Continuing with their exploration of the cavern, the party found the PA-1 unit, or as we all know him, Pal. Pal! But strangely enough, he seems to have no memories of them. It seems that our seekers have come to a new crossroads. So let's see what decisions lie in store for us today. And that's uh, where we're going to pick up. So yeah, uh, before you all is your beloved pal who has no memories of you whatsoever. He is currently outstretching his arm and you see a butterfly is actually just kind of flying around and lands on it. And he seems to be staring at it, tilting his head as he's watching very closely. And there is another robot in the area who is currently just tending to some plants, wearing what appears to be a gardener's hat with lots of holes in it, but no clothes. Streakers. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Was Pal wearing clothes before? Yes. Wait, what? Pal was wearing clothes. I mean, he is still, but they are um, more torn up. But the other robot in the area is not wearing any clothes. All of its gears and joints are completely exposed and appear to be rusting significantly. And you hear that horrible creaking sound as it leans over and starts watering some plants, despite the fact that it is very wet in this area already. 
been seeing pictures of people in armor, so as long as there's not any mechanical, um... <laughs> <laughs> you see a suspicious wire hanging down. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Finn sees Pal. He's gonna just. He's gonna book it. He's gonna run up to him. We were already talking to Pal. Uh, did, you guys, you guys did, physically. Did, did, okay, so we, we we were already. You hugged him last. Yeah, episode. I was gonna say that. Well, if I didn't get to do it last time, I'm gonna do it this time. Well, you can re-hug him. I mean, no one's gonna care. Uh, uh yeah. Finn, Finn would run up to him and, and give him a hug and say, "Pal." You jump at him to give him another hug because mm -hmm. you're just so happy to see him. He doesn't move at all. In, instead, you feel yourself coming into contact with very solid metal. Mm -hmm. Metal person. Metal person. It hurts a little bit as you uh, thunk into him. Ah, oh, you know, just with like, you know, hardcore hugs with at love. home. And, you know, it's part of the process. Uh, so instead, he's standing there. There's just a very light shake of his body. And you see as the butterfly flies off and he looks after it. And then he looks down at you. Can I help you? Oh, uh, are you injured? Uh, no, I'm pretty sure where everything's healed up already. Um, it's us, the guys. Finn, from the Finn, Finn, we've been over this. He doesn't remember us. So he doesn't seem to remember anyone. Remember, I feel he's like he's damaged. This is deja vu, isn't it? I feel like we've been through this place before. Did, did, did. Oh come on, we were like fast friends with him like 19 other times. That's uh, that's actually true. Um, I can verify that. I'm sorry, but I do not recognize you. It's okay, it's okay, bud. Um. Finn, what, what do we want to do with him? What do with him? Ask him how he's been. I mean, I you, guess. But should we? Uh, okay. Uh, he is not well. Should we help fix him? Of Would course. you like to hear a joke? I have been working on my repertoire for 2,000 years. <laughs> the laugh just like, it starts out high and then it kind of like slowly, it gets slower and de escalates. You know, pal, I really got to hear this material if you've been working on it for two millennia. Finn and Smoot look at each other with the dumbest grin, like the last two brain cells ready to have a ball. <laughs> what do robot dogs do? They bark. No, no, no. They would probably bite. B-Y-T-E. Correct. They bite. And all of a sudden, you hear the sound of almost like a cymbal clasping. And oh. you, you turn and you actually see the um, other robot in the area actually tripped. <laughs> oh, it wasn't him playing it wasn't a recorded. I was, I was like, "Wow, he's got comedic timing now." Hey, uh, you're, you're not looking as as good as uh, we saw you last. Uh, how are you doing physically? You see, as his eyes begin to uh, do that thing where they're processing. I seem to have identified several areas where I am experiencing data malfunction. What, what would you need to repair that? Processing. The processing takes a lot longer, though, than it normally did. Uh, Finn's just kind of like, oh, you must just be thinking. It, is your power core doing all right? Yeah, it's, it's, don't, don't ask him too many questions. You're going to overload him. It's, it's like, uh, Finn, it's like a computer. Oh, that's not going to help. No, that's not going to help him. Uh, it's, um, it's like asking a grandma to tell her your her, her favorite recipe while she is making it, and then she forgets what she's doing and adds extra sugar on yeah, top of what she's doing. Very, done very, very bad. It's like when that person is trying to find the word, but they can't think of it, and you keep giving them suggestions, but then that makes them think of everything besides the word they're think trying to think of. And so um, when Kelsey says grandma, Finn starts loading <laughs> <laughs> because he's all he can think of is his grandfather. Oh. Was he? <laughs> but he had a son, which means he must. That man must have been married at one point. His grandfather in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> Loading. And now Smoot is saying the things to the grandma making the cake. After a moment of very long silence and Finn standing there now processing, Pal speaks back up. I require a high amount of maintenance. I am in need of. And he just blurts out this list of just high-tech parts. Some of it sounding familiar, but others uh -huh. it's it's yep. definitively something that could not be replaced. Totally. Finn is like furiously jottering down his uh, gibberish. 
with the thought pen? Yeah, with the thought pen. As okay, quickly so as quickly as he can. <laughs> as quickly as he can. All right, perfect. So everything's uh, probably terribly misspelled. I mean, it's whatever it's, his brain perceives the writing to be. It's the syllables. So something I didn't think about is the fact that the pen is writing in your language. It, it has to be because it's... Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you would have... The right art doll. Yeah, it'd be really funny though if it was if it's been translating it to English this whole oh, time. Oh god, then he be couldn't so read frustrating. it. <laughs> no, it has to write in your life. No, well, it definitely, but, it definitely. Well, is and it, it will. It writes whatever you think. So most people think in words, but it would be really funny if you gave this to a person who thinks in shapes, because some people apparently like think in images, not words. It would be very interesting to see how that. Would work. It would not function well. I would. I wouldn't imagine. Ah, uh, pal. Um. Would you like to return with us to a facility which might have what you need to be repaired? Would that make you happy? Yes, and in, in fact, there's a lot of other people there. I mean, you seem like you got something going for you here. And Smoot just kind of gestures around to the like fairly nice garden uh, and, and like You hear the robot in the background kind of stands up at this loud creak. Yeah, but, Finn's probably going to go check on him. Leave smooth but, with Pal for a minute. You know, I, I feel like potentially your life might have more meaning or potential if you experience new circumstances. I have no problem going along with you. After all, I am a personal assistant unit, the PA-1. All right, uh, it is within my protocols to lend assistance to humans. All right, Finn, you hear that? He's going to come back to the secret base with us. Fantastic. May I have your names? Yeah, uh, I, I'm Spoot. That's Finnevere. That's Valen. And this is Kelsey. To whose authority should I register? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That seems like a very important question. Hey. Uh, uh, Smoot, you're a big man on campus. I, I, uh, we remember, with great power comes great responsibility, and if he needs to go on walks, that's going to be your territory. I mean, uh, that's fine. I mean, he's I mean, I'm willing to take the responsibility. I mean, but... can we just delay it, and maybe you can pick somebody else? I don't know. This is a big oh, responsibility, guys. I don't need a... It's like having a child. I, I, I'm sure if you become the designated caretaker or point person that you can transfer that later i'll, I'll take it for now that's not a problem yeah, you, you can register me as the designated individual he walks over to you just straight up into your personal space oh, well, gets close. really close Hi, buddy. and you can see as he lifts his hand takes his finger pointing it and touches it towards your nose and he actually touches your nose because he can't reach your forehead, so he's sure, like, sure, sure. Well, he, he might be able to, but like, it's a little bit. I'm, I'm yeah. tall. Yeah. yeah. So he, um, I've been actually. Pooped. Wait, hold on. How tall are they? I, I'm six six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they like? Five ten, five eight. Yeah, they would have to be relatively tall, so he would actually be able to reach your forehead without much issue. Yeah. It would be a little bit stretched. So he reaches over and he touches against your forehead, and you feel as something pricks you in the forehead. Ow! Registering smoked as current. Handler. And then you see his eyes do the processing thing again. And then there's a little confirmation sound. Doo -doo. Hello, Charles. It is good to see you. How may I be of assistance to you today? Now, I'm going to jump over to Finn, who is walking over to the other robot, who is currently laying in a bush as it's trying to get up. It's kind of like flailing about. I bet Finn's going to help him up and ask him, are you okay? And you lends a hand. All right, what is your strength score? Oh, like, if it's working out, he's got like a 12. Oh, yeah, he's got 12 now. Oh, so, a whole uh, plus one yeah, mod? Yeah, I got a one mod. Yeah. Look at that. He's got some muscle toning. Okay. Carrying that backpack is finally starting to pay off. Okay. And you even lightened the backpack, too. <laughs> At least a little bit. A lot of bit. All right, so you actually, with, with some difficulty, because of the way that this robot is currently lying in the bush he's also kind of struggling to get out so he's helping you in that way you manage to pull him out he stumbles back a little bit and falls onto his bottom if that's what that is at all and you see as like a few parts kind of like fall out of him and fly out onto the ground but he looks up at you and you hear a 
as he stands oh. back up. All and right. Fake brushes himself off. Oh, no, hey, let me help you with that. Um, oh, gosh, you're not wearing any clothes. Uh, <clears throat> be careful, your rust is showing. <laughs> uh, what's your name? <laughs> you see, like, little sparks are flying out from his neck as he's talking. Or at least uh, doing something that could be akin to talking. Pal, is he going to be okay? He shouts over. Finn's trying to inspect him to see if he can figure out, is he injured or something? You see his pal turns towards you. Ah, you mean the General Autonomous Robotic Device for Navigation and Environmental Research? Oh, that's what that thing is! Can you... Yeah, he, uh, j- j- that was really fast. <laughs> I'm going to call you John. I like John. John's good. Um, I want you guys. Hold on. Hold on. General Autonomous Robotic Device for Navigation and Environmental Research. Wait, Jordan? Wait, what was it? General? <laughs> General? Environment? No, autonomous, autonomous? Robotic? Robotic. Device. Device. For, for environmental? Well, actually, no. It should be for... For nature, not navigation, for nature and environmental research. Oh, garden. Gardener. All right, right, John. um, (laughs) I like John. John's good. John's good. (laughs) Um, Pal, can can you understand John over there? Uh, How many of these things are around? There is only one that you can see. You could roll a perception check if you would like to take a closer look yeah, at the area. Sure, let, 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 let's see what our eyes. Yeah, see no, today. we're taking Pal out of here. This needs to be like an exodus of his people. You know, true. <laughs> we got we got to break <laughs> the whole party's coming. Uh, oh man, Did, are we setting ourselves up for a voluntary escort quest? I don't know about. <laughs> that what do you mean? Like they're Autobots they're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen for Finn. 26 for Charles Smooth. Finn, you find yourself so concerned with John, John. the gardener, um, that your attention is only on him and also of the sparks that are flying out of his neck when he is attempting to make sound, uh, which you assume is, I guess, his talking. But Charles, you, and also um, for both of you, actually, you do notice that the garden that he's taking care of is very well formed around this uh, these set of plaques, it's almost like monuments, which you see have names on it. But for Charles, looking around, covered in moss, leaning against some of the walls of this area, you do see what appear to be the remains of other gardener robots. Um, pal, what... John over there know, like, the topographical nature of this cavern, this underground space. The General Autonomous Robotic Device for Nature and Environmental Research is purposely designed for caretaking, as well as ensuring the environment does not decline beyond certain parameters. Okay. Didn't answer my question. All right, pal, first thing first. I need you to refer to that unit as John from now on. You would like me to call this unit John right now? No, just call him John. You would like for me to refer to this unit as just call him John? No. Foul. Okay. This unit, this unit's name will be whatever I say after I say call him this. You would like for me to call this unit. No, 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 pal. Call him John. Unit name equal John. I'm sorry. I did not get that. Please <laughs> repeat. He, John. John, he. You just hear a like, See, he's a big fan. John, he. That's how the name Johnny was born. <laughs> wait, wait, Mr. Smoot, you're an old guy. So what if instead of saying it that way, you, you give a more specific pal, call this unit John. That is literally what I said. That is not what you said. You added so many extra words. Uh, but then I simplified it. Oh, this is why. Did you have trouble with your cell phone back in the day? No, I kept my Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What, what's the no key? Is that a, is that a type of animal? How it's did that not survive? <laughs> it is an indestructible brick. Listen, Charlotte tried to get me some newfangled Blackberry and then later on a, like, iPhone 3 or something. Had absolutely no interest in it. Okay, Mr. Smoot, give the robot these instructions. Okay. Pal, uh-huh. call the unit John. Okay, pal, call that unit John. Updating database. Okay, oh, just gosh darn it. These I things. will refer to that unit as John. Thank you. Okay, could John draw a map of the area? John is programmed to take care of the environment and to ensure that it is kept within certain parameters. John is not capable of drawing out schematics or designs. John is equipped with the ability to utilize tools such as hoes. Sorry. (laughs) Hoes. (laughs) <laughs> he knows his way around a hoe. Let's just be clear. Uh, such tools as hoes. There is no more list. <laughs> That's it. Such tools as hoes, watering cans, spades, shovels, as well as management of the soil. He can perform basic calculations That's of chemistry fine. with determining... Would you like me no, to no, stop? No. Yes, please, please, pal. Come on, see. Okay. Um, can you draw a map of this area? Would that make you happy? Yes, it would make me very happy if I could have a, a, a map of this entire cave structure. You would like me to draw you a map of the underground facility? Yes, that would be great. I can attempt to do so. Ben, ben uh, tons. All right, we'll bring it over here. We're going to hopefully cheat on our homework. I really hope this works, because I'm getting tired. I've already been here for a week. Speaking of which, gentlemen, I need you all to roll a fortitude save. Fortitude! I'm an expert in fortitude with plus 13. Hopefully I don't roll a two. Oh, I didn't. That's nice. I'm an expert at rolling bad. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> ah, you're fine. Oh, man. Failing my rolling bad. That's a good thing. Yeah, this is rolling good. 24. And a 28 for Charles Smoot. So I, he's going to give him the, the, the pen he got from the facility. Okay. You see, as he takes hold of the thought pen, there seems to be some sort of static shock that occurs when mm. Pal comes into contact with it, and you feel a zap in your fingers. Mm. Ow. Oh, may, maybe not that one. Ah, oh, fine. He'll hand over the, the quill and uh, the his nice fancy pen... pen. He will watch over him the whole time. (laughs) Okay. Pal takes the sheet of paper and seems to look around for a moment, processing, and walks over to what appears to be a slightly dirty table, which he brushes off as he places down the paper. Oh, hold on. I can get you a flatter surface. Actually, no. He doesn't have a book anymore. Oh, no! Oh, no. Among the many things that you can replace back in um, Lamb's Respite... Or maybe, like, have place an order, an order from David. Who knows? David! David. So, yeah, he goes over and he starts, like, brushing away some dirt on the table. And then he begins drawing on the paper. And you see as his hand makes very quick strokes. And there is a map quickly forming on the sheet of paper. Uh, Finn would be giddy as a schoolgirl watching this. Is it working? I think it's working. Certainly looks like it's working. Yeah. Uh, wait, where's our map? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here, let me let me pull it out. I'll, I'll try and copy it. Uh, quick, 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 quick. Uh, Finn, this one looks a little bit more artistically interpretative. Uh, maybe you would be better at this. Well, I've been practicing. I mean, I guess suppose I could. Let's see here. Oh, oh man, can. he's very interested. <laughs> Twenty nine. Oh yeah. All right, Finn. You only have one other pen. It's a thought pen. Mm-hmm. Better hold on to it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Buy some cheaper pens back at uh, Lambs of Spite. <laughs> cheaper pens. Um, you click the pen down and you feel that familiar sensation of the pen starting to pull your hand towards the paper. Doesn't matter where your hand is sitting, though, because it wants to write no matter what. Wait. 
Why am I filling this in? Uh, we save this as some extra notes. It looks like he'll be finished in no time. We just submit that. Okay, okay. M maybe I am misunderstanding it. We have, like, a big canvas. A big map. I want to fill out the big map he is drawing on sheets of paper. He draws it on a small sheet of a single sheet of paper and right. 8.5 by 11.2. You see the problem here. Is this AI art? This is the first this is the <laughs> first mid journey. It's like okay, well maybe we just get him to a whole bunch of smaller papers but I guess I mean all right, how is this? And he turns and lifts up the how sheet of paper. Does it, look? it looks like a masterpiece top down view. He has shading and shadows oh, wow. and like think... very little details. He's even done some stippling in areas. But the map, from what you can tell, seems to be detailing something that's a bit older than so, what you've seen. That's it's fine. a very good map that isn't as relevant anymore. You don't know but, that. Well, we can see our, our map, the very detailed changes because it's zoomed in. Some significant details, I'm assuming, like um, how, the crevice in the ground, bad? perhaps, yeah, or the how? river or something changed. Yes, some things on the map have certainly changed over the last 2,000 years. But how bad? <laughs> <laughs> I want to cheat on my homework and go home and sleep in a bed, not on the ground. Mr. Smoot, if we submit something subpar, how do you think Eden would feel about that? Then we are bringing a talking metal person to her. That Do you think she is going to care? So we are bringing him with us then? Of course. I think that's a very smart thing. It would really help us jump up in the ranks. Maybe Finn can actually join okay, us up here. Good, he can do. He's, he says he's a personal assistant. Okay, we uh, assist him. He assists us. Everyone uh, wins. Right, well, okay. Look at this paper. For, okay, guys, we, we need to calm down for a moment. For every action, there will be a consequence. Yes. If we bring Pal to the Seeker Guild, and it does draw interest, who's to say that Pal gets to stay with us? What if the Seeker Girl oh. tries to take him, experiment on him, study him, dismember and dissect him? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They didn't do that to us. Maybe we can just get him a job. Uh, yeah, they didn't do that to us because we aren't a metal person from 2,000 years ago, Finn. Ah, uh, Mr. Finnevere. Uh, you I... know that we're in a situation. Mr. Finnevere's not wrong, though. Look, he's made of metal, but that doesn't make him not a person? No, it makes him incredibly interesting. How many metal people have you seen? No, Mr. Just Smooth. Just the two. I mean, right. and the, the, all the ones oh, no. from before. And if you were a scientist, and you have seen, and you are seeing something for the first time that you've never seen before, would you not wish to examine it? Yeah, ask it questions and such. Oh, some people go a little bit further than asking questions, Finn. I didn't grow up with any scientists. I don't know anything about that. I just, they just devoid of morale. <laughs> An educated fool. <laughs> exactly, Finn. What is your two cents on the matter? Well, and Kelsey finally just says, Mr. Smoot, I think Mr. Vinevier has a very fair point, knowing our little bid secret. Okay, listen, I can I, I, like, pull some strings, throw some weight around, and, and like talk with Eden, and, and see if an exception can be made. Valen was about to say something, and you can just see as he retracts his hand and puts it back down by his side, just nodding along, going along with what's being said. Not going to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, no, Finn's everyone's like, yep, I do the same thing. <laughs> ah, fine. Okay. Um, Valen walks over to you, Finn, and kind of leans in. It's like watching a father and daughter fight. Yep. You have so, one of those um, nuts that you had the other day? I like it when we went foraging. Yeah. I feel like they were really good for like a just a snack to have. It's like popping them out. A little distraction. Yeah, he yeah. gives them half. But yeah, he starts eating them as as these two are arguing. You know, sometimes they switch roles. I know, and particularly on certain times of the month, I've noticed for Kelsey. And sometimes, more than once, they switch in the same conversation. Like who's and you both who's are reprimanding like, who? Yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. I think it would be maybe okay to bring him back. It's up to you, though, since you are in charge of him, after all. Uh, oh, Paul said he wanted to come with us. It's oh, he, He's coming with us. That's no debate. I'm just saying we may need to be aware of the reality that we may be met with resistance. <sighs> yeah. Well, 
Smoot, how real is this? Finn's starting to think of, like, his hand, which I don't know if he would still be wearing gloves at this point. So he'd probably be rubbing his, uh, his scar. Jog my memory from when is this scar? When he got branded! Oh, right. Live branded! Sure. Yes. Okay. Very good. For using magic because someone didn't agree with him. Right. <laughs> that was more than nothing. I, I was, I was, uh, <laughs> wait, wait. That, that's a little bit out of context. <laughs> I, I do like how you portray the situation. <laughs> I, I'm glad that's the story Finn tells. <laughs> that's a very Finn thing to do. We had different philosophies. You tried to mug a military escort. That's not why he got branded. That's why he got put in jail. He got branded for healing his wounds. You were a magic user, so they needed to make note of that. Didn't you also try to cast sleep on the guard? Yes. Oh, I know. He successfully Absolutely. cast sleep on the guard, but I guess they didn't catch that. They just, like, that's intimidated we... someone unconscious. Yeah, that's how we, we broke him out of prison. No, it's also what he did to the guard when he walked up. He's like, sleep. Yep. And then he got tackled. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful times. Listen, uh, I don't think Eden is going to be too upset. We can cheat on some of our homework. How about this? We haven't really explored the south wall too much of this area. If we hug the southern cliffside as we return back to the portal, we'll map out some new area, and we would have done around about two-thirds. We can use Pal's detailed drawings to fill in the rest. Pardon me. Did you happen to make communication with the surface? Yes. Yes. We're, we're from the surface, pal. He seems to be registering that. Ah, I understand. Then the transmission from the main tower went out. Which transmission? He pauses for a second. I don't know. That is very strange. Odd, I would say something. I have no recollection. We're going to hopefully get that fixed one day, pal. Hopefully sooner rather than Pal, uh, quick question. Uh, you're, you're still up at Adam moving about. How, how do you recharge? I have the ability to recharge via solar power as well as using a charging base. However, the majority of the charging bases at the main facility have failed or are occupied. Occupied? Are, are there... Yeah, well, we met some on the way here. Uh, I guess that's true. Pal, would you benefit from a power core? He seems to be registering for a moment. Uh, he'll just raise it up and finish calling it a power core. They're actually, like, this big. Oh, my gosh! They're large. Sectuple-A battery. <laughs> okay, think of it like an hourglass. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. It is a four-inch hourglass, but the center of the hourglass, instead of cutting inward is actually the sphere on the inside. It is contained within like a small metal cage where it hovers on the inside and floats ah, around. You know what? That's how they were described back in Ashby and... It's just been a hot sec. You yeah, know? it's been a hot sec. Yeah. So we, we just kind of refer to them and not really think about what they look like. Yeah. It's core sounds round. Right. Just sounds and, round. And it's also at the center of the device. All right. But still, I mean, I guess I'll lift one up and... Ah, I understand. Updating database reflecting terminology from battery pack to power core. It seems that my power core is functioning at half capacity. A new core would be beneficial. However, the potential for obtaining one that is fully functioning is at a probability of at least 78.9999999. You can round! 79%. Paul, are you able to tell me how good this core is? He scans it. Your power core is currently at 26%. Ah. Uh, all right. Wait, wait a minute. You, you know the power cores. You think he would be able to tell how many uses a relic has? Oh, hmm. Well, this... Pal, if you wouldn't mind, what can you tell me about this? And he'll hold up Isabel. Oh, okay. So this is actually diving into the lore of the dog. Deep lore. How did I learn Isabel's name? Don't remember. 
You told us that was her name. Oh, I just I just asserted that was her name. I thought he saw it on like a tag or something. Or like it came to you mentally. Oh, spooky. Get in the comments now. <laughs> Get in the comments. You tell me. Find that episode. Ah, that is a Never Lost doll. A very popular toy amongst the youths back in the 26th century. Would you like to hear more? Uh, yes. I have a recording of an advertisement for the doll. You have a adver- what? They were produced? Like... These were mass-produced for over 50 years. All right. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. You see as he pauses and seems to, like, cycle for a moment. And then you hear a voice kind of come out. No more tears over leaving your stuff, Mr. Fluffkins, at school or the park. With a simple prick and a drop of blood, our Never Lost Dolls will always be at your side. They come in vintage and modern patterns. Now is your chance to buy one for $19.99 and you can get a second one for free. That's right, for free. For the audience members at home who cannot see, Jaden was attempting to take notes for all of five seconds until that infomercial absolutely floored him. <laughs> I was slain. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll keep my uh, my notes in there. Disturbed. <laughs> I, I love them so For much. posterity's sake. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was great. And he can offer you some very insightful information on the doll unless you would like your character to keep the illusion alive. Uh, I mean, I, he did ask a question, so I, for better or for worse, whatever answer comes out is, okay. is the consequence. So, it is a child's toy that can never be lost. And when it is picked up by a humanoid creature, it pricks the creature and sets it as its owner. The doll can no longer be lost, destroyed, or permanently taken away from the owner. If the doll is thrown away or destroyed, it will return the next night in the same condition as when it was first found. It has basically a bunch of nanobots in it that repair um, any damage to it and then also kind of like move it around. But you learn that the doll can only be gotten rid of by giving it away to someone who accepts it as a gift or if its owner dies, the doll becomes dormant. It can be destroyed at this time. If the doll is picked up by another humanoid creature, it will reactivate and start the process all over again. But additionally, um, so it is based off of first edition's Needful Doll, FYI. And so what it does is if it is lost or there's an attempt to destroy it, the doll is programmed to send out certain signals to the child's brain or the owner's brain to cause horrific nightmares that scold the child and make it feel guilty for leaving it behind. It will, if the doll was destroyed, it will, in the nightmare, harm the child in the same way that it was destroyed. If it was lost, it will will leave the owner with a dream where the owner is being left by all of its comrades and leave you with a sense of loneliness. It does a bunch of things. It's very vindictive. Finn, just kind of like a little lost by this. He's going. One day, it showed me a vision of my mother. Is there a way to? Is it not actually linked to them? Pal pauses for a second. I don't understand the question. The doll only offers punishment equivalent to the harm done to it. It is a very effective teaching tool. It was effective, but I had not seen my mother's face in years, and it was so vivid. Uh, Could I perhaps use it to find someone I'd seen but can't remember? I have no data on the doll offering information regarding persons you have no recollection of. Hmm. Well, uh, I appreciate the information, pal. Um, you can add to your uh, repertoire that uh, she makes a good therapist. She listens well. He pauses for a second. Unable to update database. Pal, well, your I- image brought me great joy, but I do have a question about it. Uh, and he'll hold up the paper that he drew. This seems to be from a long time ago. It's, do you have an updated database or is there an easy way to update your database for for a updated map unfortunately my database 
for the facility cannot be updated without a thorough scan of the cavern. What if you had some modern information or updated information? I could potentially update my information if I were to utilize a powerful device that broadcasts across the cavern. Would you be able to use the transmission tower for that? Hey, Kelsey, we came across the power tower. You said it was power tower. There's the, uh, yeah, uh, oh, uh, It is called a transmission tower. No, that's a transistor tower that he was talking about. It's all the same thing, Bahamak. No, they're very different. What? No, but he was talking about a transmission tower. He said it sent out a signal. Finn is going to try to draw a the, what they saw the and see if Pal can identify it and as the correct tower. Yeah, give me a roll for that, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I like making an X marks the spot. Artistry, right? Yes. All right, let's go. Oh! Snap! Crack 19. Pop? Oh, yeah. For a total of 30. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Benavir, Pal looks at your drawing. You are speaking of the transmission tower. That tower is utilized for transmitting power across the underground facilities. Ah, uh, well, I'll admit when I'm wrong. You see, Spoot, if we do the thing, we can do it right. And then we get a good map. And then maybe Eden doesn't say scary things at us for bringing back a map that isn't correct. I don't really think Eden's going to care that much about a map that's not correct. I feel like that's a little under her pay grade. I feel like you'd be contending with Zora. Uh, a little less scared, but still in the scared category. I Let's mean, not yeah. get... We, we she might does as well. burn tapestries. She does burn people's tapestries. Do you have any tapestries? <laughs> he like holds onto his cloak like tighter. <laughs> It's like some curtains he stole from his grandfather's mansion. <laughs> that he hemmed to fit him. <laughs> oh, you would have to get some like made that are up to his taste. He had some money that he got from he definitely did. commission oh. work. I'm really fine if we want to go back to the city and try and hook Pal up to the tower, but also, Pal, well, how, how safe is that? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you are suggesting. If, if you, yeah. hook... there is a transmission tower near the laboratory facilities in the northern part of the cavern near the exit. And he points on his map. Oh, oh, he wants us to go back up to the, the laboratory. That's such a long way away. Yeah, that's he points days. on his map up um, an area 4D on the map. Oh! Because you guys, the yeah, facility is in 4B. And yeah. Pal explains the transmission tower is only accessible from this region. He points to laboratory. There is an entrance and a railway that will take you there. Oh, Finn, there's no way that that is still intact and functional. Mm -hmm. Okay, Finn, we have been here for a week. I do not want to be here anymore. I am very glad to appreciate of all the things and information that we've gotten from this location. However, I am getting anxious. I would like to sleep in a bed. It is still at least two, if not three days to get back to the gate. There's no way that I am walking another entire lap around this cavern. I would like to point out that we three at least slept in a bed at least, what was it, 15 times? Hey, like okay. two minutes? Well, sometimes we forgot. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure I was the best man at one of your alternate weddings. Valen looks around very, like, worried. I mean, hey, Valen, you and him became fast friends. You were born, you were given land, and then you were fast friends. I still think it's very funny that in every single iteration, I was still of a higher class than you. That is wants. still bogus! <laughs> uh, maybe there are no fates at play. Uh, I, I think I missed out on a lot of stuff over there. Um, yeah, and I'm sure Kelsey would like to sleep in a bed. Yes, I really would. I, I, I smell like a man. I feel... I don't feel like a man, but I feel grimy like a man. All right. We're, we're, we can always come back. That's never not been an option. All right. I guess that makes sense. But uh, if my, uh, honestly, Mr. Smoot, if my rank gets any lower, they're going to have to invent a new rank. That, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll handle it. Okay. Well, well, let's see. What do they steal? Bronze, silver. What's below steel? It's like 
tin? You want to be tin tier? I think that's just the initiates. Or wood tier? Oh, wood tier. Oh, that's there you a pretty go. good tier. That, that's good. That's good. What are you all on about? There's no tier below steel. Well, that's what exactly. I'm saying. Exactly. What happens to me if they don't like it? The adventures of wood division. All right. Well, I guess worst case we come back. It would be nice to get some actual food. Right. All right. So, crew, you ready for the long trek back? I think we could probably cut our travel time into a much shorter period since we won't be exploring as much. Yeah, I mean, as long as we're not taking the majority of the day to sit down and detailly map out the area. Uh, how long do you think it'll take? Because my food supply is starting to get low. I mean, I would imagine at least a day and a half. Maybe two days. Three tops. I believe you are talking about traveling to the Outer Rim. Is that correct? Oh, uh, Finn will get out our map, and he's going to point where the gate is. There's a gate here. Correct. There is a gate near the outer rim. Yes, yes. that's where we're trying to get to. I understand. Have you tried taking the railway? Okay. Uh, is there a railway entrance near here? Yeah, I would like, love to check. You know what? I, I might as well. You know, never say never. He turns and starts to point in direction, but where he points, you can see the wall has completely collapsed down. Oh, I see. That would not be a possibility. I apologize. Wait, wait. How can we investigate this? I want to see how, like, is this an underground thing? It looks like it is actually a rail, like it goes into the side of the cavern wall. Because at the very least, it would be a straight shot tunnel, which might be fat as long as it's not collapsed entirely, it would be faster than trekking through the forest. Well, theoretically, if we were able to get down there and it was close to, if it was as it was before, uh, how would this help us get to the gate? Could you explain the routing or give us a vague idea by pointing? Is it just like a straight shot? It would travel through the side of the outer rim. Oh, it's a straight shot. That's A to B. However, if the tunnel entrance has collapsed, I would have concerns regarding the stability and safety of the tunnels. Additionally, the railway cars could be blocking the path. Um, what, what if we climbed to the top of the cliffs? Uh, if, if we were able to climb the cliff of the outer rim, is that easier to traverse than the forest? I don't think he's been up there. It doesn't sound like he's been around. Climbing onto the outer rim may be potentially hazardous for you humans. Your exposure to radiation levels has already increased. Excuse me? I don't I don't like the sound. He doesn't know what that word means. I, I do, and I don't like the sound of radiation levels. All facilities are located on the ground floors. There was potential for building into the sides of the cavern. However, exposure to radiation from the solar crystals could lead to damage and also higher levels of illness among the inhabitants. All right, guys. So here are our options. Are we going to die? Well, Kelsey, when you put it that way, probably. Now pick your poison. Are we trekking our way back through the jungle? Are we climbing the cliff or are we going in a tunnel which could potentially collapse on us at any second? I mean, the safest path would definitely be just going the way we came. There are man-eating plants and giant 40-foot-tall monkeys there. Well, maybe you shouldn't engage a man-eating plant. All right, pal, what wait, way wait, wait, do you... wait. I didn't see any man-eating plants. What did I miss out on? <laughs> uh, man, man, la, 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 la. not now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Pal, what in your estimation is the safest route? Technically speaking, the safest path would have been the railway, or rather, the fastest path. What is the safest path? If the railway is collapsed, is that still a viable option? If the railway is collapsed, it would not be a viable option. Alrighty, we're burning daylight. Let's just go through the hot, muggy, stinky, stupid jungle. You hear as yeah, yeah. the other little robot kind of like yeah. speaks up. Oh, what do we do about John? Is he going to be able to keep up in his condition? 
John is actually, he's, you hear him behind you going, and he's standing there, and he's just looking at you, holding a watering can in his hand, and he's looking down and looking back up at you. I think think you're on something he's he's trying to take care of. Yeah, Paul, um, I can't really, I don't know if John understands me. Um, Do you know if he would want to come too? He looks like he's in rough shape, and there might be people who could help him on the other side of the gate. The John unit is unable to express emotion. He is currently attempting to provide care for the flowers. You are currently standing on a bed of them. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, the John just goes over and just starts watering the plants. But then he puts down the bucket and starts like scooping them up and trying to get them to stand. But they keep falling over. They've been damaged. You're a monster, Mr. Finnevere. I feel a like monster. a monster. And you think I'm socially unaware. I mean, goodness gracious. I just so excited. I sorry. All right. Um All right. Let's just let's let's make our way back and Okay, well but Finnevere seems very sentimental. Are we gonna try and bring John with us? I feel like he's really gonna slow us down. Oh, only John wants to come. He, John, he seems John fairly come. satisfied. If he doesn't want to come, he doesn't have to. Well, remember, Mr. Finnevere, there's going to be a... When we return in this map, there will be other Seekers coming to this place, so maybe we can talk with them. Uh, maybe? Uh, but also, I don't think they're going to be that sentimental, I don't Kelsey. think they're going to be as I, I, kind-hearted I, I as we would, would be. Yeah, I think they would tear it apart. Oh. What? They would probably scrap him for parts. Ah, uh, well, he's lived they a good... Take- Long life of 2,000 plus years. That's true. I mean, Fanny, if you'd live for 2,000 years and you were on your last leg, wouldn't you want someone to put you out of your misery? Well, if they went to scrap ones, take the angry ones and Finn, like, takes out the arm that he took. <laughs> That's right, he has the arm. <laughs> very fair, Finn, very fair. All right. I don't even know why I'm keeping this. <laughs> what does he do with it? He just sticks it back back in the backpack behind him. And you see his, like, the arm, like, as you stick it in there, it slumps back over so that the elbow joint is just, like, holding onto the bag. So, what is the group's decision? We're just going to trek our way back through the jungle, as that is the only surefire way to get back to where we need to be. Because you've already mapped out the area, you know the safest path, or at least you know the path. I'm going to have you roll two survival checks, because I'm going to say it takes you about two days to get back. Sound fair? Yep. Okay. So, go ahead and give me your first survival check roll. 19 for Charles Smoot. And 20 for Finn. I'm going to say you guys do fine. And you make your way back. Finally, with Pal behind you trekking along the way as he's looking around the entire time and enjoying every moment. He even stays up and keeps watch for you. Although he is not sure what that means or why, he does it anyway. But gentlemen, hold on. Monkey? No, no, no. <laughs> Hopefully not, right? No, but... actually, you avoid monkey. Good stuff. Like, you know, usually you, we can yeah. hear him. Yeah, you, you guys heard him, but he was in the distance. You make your way to the gate. Sounds it is before you. You turn it on, activating it, and you step through. Oh, yeah, Ben's gonna turn to Pal and explain how this thing can mess up your stomach. It's Ben, he doesn't have a stomach. But he's got one right there. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, I have eyes smooth. Uh, uh, just because occasionally that's... You know what, Ben, fine. I'm going to let you guys explain this. Valen goes through first this time. Uh, Pal, how about you go in before me? That way I can make sure you can get across fine. Here, I I can guide him. Sure. All right, Pal, take my hand. I don't know how this is going to work. Okay. Oh, this could be terrible. She says she, like, grabs his hand and he actually holds on. Where are we going? He just follows after her through the gate. Back to base. All right. And then, Ben, he's going (gasps) to... Hold his breath, grit his, his stomach, and it's gonna he's gonna jump through. Okay. Charles does likewise. Alright, please roll your fortitude saves. Uh sixteen. <laughs> Thirty for Charles Smoot. Okay. So you both pass through the gate. Finavir, you feel a little bit queasy, mm-hmm. but only for like a few seconds. But you do see Valen and Kelsey both doubled over vomiting on the floor, and you see that uh there is somebody standing by with a bucket and a mop currently. Oh, come on! How does this happen every time, guys? You know it's coming! But Pal is leaning over, patting Kelsey on the back. There, 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 there. That was very strange. The person with the bucket 
and Mom just kind of drops it for a second. Mr. Mosasa! And he just runs off. Uh, Charles Smoot immediately pulls out his sword. And does what? He is going to defend Pal with his life. Oh, so like uh, you're waiting for something to come at him. Yo, B- Musa is the head scientist and researcher of the Seeker base. Well, Finn doesn't know that. Maybe we should have that conversation. Finn should know that. You've had many conversations with Musa. Oh, he seems like a nerdy type guy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. If they're getting Musa, they're going to try and take him. Uh, everyone, weapons out. He's ours. Pal, you're with us. Don't let anyone else take you. I don't understand why we are pulling out weapons. Wouldn't that cause harm? Uh, the, the goal here will be no one gets harmed, Mr. Smoot. That is very correct. No, I'm going to attempt to make sure that there is no harm done to anyone, including you, pal. Charles, I need you to roll a will save Charles. as pal stands and starts looking at you and he starts talking to you. It is not wise for a man to draw a weapon unprovoked. And he starts, like, like reciting proverbs and trying to calm you down. Fourteen from Charles Smoot's well. You immediately put down your weapon. Oh, I don't, I don't, I mean, he's going to be deregistered so quickly. He shall not (laughs) quell my rage. Part of the PA1 unit's job was to keep people calm when they were upset. (laughs) Gosh darn it, pal, you make good points, but you know that. And Charles Smoot just puts his sword away. Fine, we'll try and deal with this without swords, but you don't go anywhere with anyone who's not us. A moment later, you see as Musa walks around the corner, there are a few of the other archivists who are standing off to the sides, kind of peeking their heads around, very curious. Oh, what is this? Very strange humanoid creature. And he walks over and begins examining, Musa. looking around and poking at him. I, 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 as soon as he tries to get close, I, I step my large body in between his very small frame and my robot. He tries to step around you and like starts peeking around. I will, if I have to, roll an athletics check to grab him. Sure, because he does not care what you are doing. He is trying to get to pal. <laughs> That is a 31 on my athletics to grab this tiny man. What are you doing? Put me down very uh, uh, immediately. Osa, Osa. Our... You have no authority in this place. You he... must put me down. Musa, I want you to listen to me very carefully. I need you to listen to me very carefully, Charles. Okay, wait, no, wait. you can externally examine him. You will not break or harm him. He must be quarantined immediately. No! We do not know anything about this creature. It could be dangerous for our society. He's not dangerous. He's mine. He's staying with me. If you have a problem, you can talk to Eden. I can sense that there is some tension in this room. Would you like to hear a joke? I have heard my jokes are legendary. They are legendary. Musa, you just sit back, relax, and listen to Pal's joke, okay, bud? What was the robot's favorite rock band? Oh, gosh. There's so many dumb rock band names we can come up with. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hit me with it. Metallica. Oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> Musa just pauses for a second. As he's still, Are you still holding him, by the way? I, I, set, I set him down, okay, but okay. I put him like five feet away from... Oh, he does not stay five feet away. He immediately just tries to walk past you again. To... You do not disassemble a thing, Musa. I can still sense there is some hostility in this room. Perhaps we should defuse the situation. Oh, that sounds great. Very strange creature. And what, what exactly are you? He, he says as he walks up to him and Pal just tilts his head. I am the PA-1 unit personal assistant. My designation is to offer aid to humans as is required. Interesting. Well, he looks him up and down again. Can you, can you walk then? and follow after me. There are very many, many questions and oh, many uh, thoughts. And... I, I'm, very, I'm very sorry, Musa. Before you can do that, we've got to go report to Eden in regards to this. And I'm, I'm sure she will be happy to let you examine Pal after our conversation. Ah, oh, but you could follow and ask questions while we walk that way. You could come with us. You cannot take him out of the archive. That is dangerous. Far too dangerous. Do you know the sort of exposure there could be to other unstable relics. The damage you could cause to this base. Musa, 
We've been traveling with, we, we have dealt with this entity, if you would, robot, android, for weeks. There's been no problems. I don't understand what is happening currently. Musa here is concerned that if you come in contact with any power core related objects that some of them might go haywire and cause damage to the facility. I don't understand why that would be unless the batteries themselves were completely unstable. I agree with you, pal. However, Musa is a very paranoid individual and skeptical at best. If this is causing tension, I can stay behind and wait for you to return. Musa, you do not disassemble him. Do you hear me? Why would I disassemble him? Do you think me a monster? I don't know what I think of you yet. The verdict's still out on that. You can have polite and cordial conversation. He's Mr. very good at that. Scout, please stop. They're all looking at us right now. Bahumbug! They all know me, and I will decapitate all of them. Oh, no, no, my God. He's a monster. They should fire him immediately. Musa, we will be back soon. Oh, yes, Charles. That's the right way to do it, Valen says, as he stands up after vomiting and brushes himself off. <clears throat> you know, at least I could hold my lunch, bud. You're a rather fortuitous man, I will say that. All right. Musa, do you know if Eden is in her chambers or office or whatever? Eden is currently out at the moment. It seems that she had some business to attend to. She should be returning soon. All right, fine. Well, everyone, we're just going to go to the front desk, turn this in, and wait and see when Eden comes. Uh, if, if someone wants... One of us could stay behind with Pal. We don't all have to go. I don't think... Mr. Smoot, I don't think they're going to do anything to him. Okay, do you know, as paranoid and skeptical as Musa is, I am likewise... Then I'm you trusting. can stay behind and we'll turn you know everything sure. in. Here you go, everyone. I, 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 hand, the, I hand them the, the map case and everything. You guys go turn it in. I'll stay behind. Smoot, don't get fired while we're gone. It's not my goal. Okay, so Charles stays behind with Pal while M Musa is literally walking around poking at him and asking him lots of questions. Very strange questions that don't... Musa doesn't have a lot of information, right? But he is doing his best to ask questions to provoke information, and he is having very similar issues to what Charles had when he asks questions. Meanwhile, you guys head upstairs into the main keep. As you are walking up there, while there is some of the typical noise in the main hall, walking into it, you see that it's a lot of older members. Finnevere, that you actually remember some of these people. And as you're walking up towards the information desk, you notice on the wall there seems to be the boards... The lists on them seem noticeably smaller than when you guys had left originally, particularly in the upper groups, which you know it only goes from steel up to silver in the guild hall. Even the steel seeker list has dropped considerably. Vinavir, your name having moved up in the ranks. There are only 20 people on the board, on the steel tier board. Bronze only contains 15, including your party members. Oh my gosh. Finn is going to stop what he's doing because Taylor's name wasn't on here when he fell off a cliff, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And as far as he knows, Taylor's dead. Taylor's name never made it onto the board. Oh, that's right. Because he never he didn't, graduated. He didn't pass the initiation test, technically speaking. I, some, I, I feel Mest like someone told have, him though. that Mest would that have. names come off the board. He thinks that people are dying, at, at least. They're, at least that's the theory. He's going uh, to try to is, find someone with gray hair, someone who looks like they've been in this for a while, the uh, oldest person he can find that's uh, also near the board, and try to ask them why they think the board is so small. All right, sure. You see that there is, uh, there are two gentlemen with relative gray in their hair, mostly streaked on the sides, who seem to be sparring momentarily. Uh, one of them kind of like walks away after a particularly rough uh, parry. He seems to be massaging his shoulder as he walks away and kind of sheaths his sword. Uh, then I'll offer him some water while he goes up to he'll like hand him out a ah, jug. Thank you, lad. Hey, um, we just got back from a rather lengthy quest. 
There are a lot, a lot less names on the board than I remember. Am I going crazy or? No, you're not going crazy at all. Oh, uh, do does anyone know what's going on? Are people quitting or something? Are we being hunted? Can't say hunted for sure. Something's definitely going on. A number of people have quit from the guild, and many others having died of mysterious causes. Alright, so your name does get removed from the board if you die. Undoubtedly. Has this happened before? I'm still kind of new here. He looks you up and down. What rank are you? Um, I'm Steel. Uh, he'll hold up his pendant. <laughs> uh, well, good luck to you, lad. All I can say is, it's not unusual for a number of us to die off. Old age. The adventure itself. People quit as well. Not in these numbers. Well, I'll have to watch out for myself. Right. Well, there's been a number of them. Most of us up here have been fine, but anybody that was traveling down to the southeast seems to have had some issues. Uh, he wants to, Ben wants to go scan the board for two names specifically. Sure. John the Backstabber. John Xavier. Yeah, John Xavier Backstabberson the third. Okay. Uh, if his name's still on there. What rank was he? Do you know? I don't know. I was guessing something. Whatever is above bronze. So you only see that there are three tier boards here. And there it goes steel, bronze, silver. Okay, anyone gold or higher is private All record. Right. So I guess he might not have known for sure if his name was on there. But Baron, he wants to see if her name's on there. Her name is not on the list. Um, well, Join his party members, presumably, in line. It's a short line. Oh, shoot, that's right. Perfect. Less people, we short are, line. We are a quarter of steel. Yeah. Uh, you, you you are. Uh, uh, our group consists of, what, M- Me, Kelsey, people. and Valen are in bronze. They leveled up while you were gone. Oh, they, dang. Yeah. We're, we are a higher tier. <laughs> you... we, we were working for a month while you, you were No, 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 it was your... six months that passed. Oh, I'm sorry. Apparently, was it that long? Yes. Jeez. Yeah. I, we're high enough in bronze also that we can take the silver placement test as well if we wanted to. Oh, dang. Well, I mean, what what rank was he? What rank are you in steel now? But also, once he turns the question, uh, that should go up. 43. Oh, no. I said 20th, I thought. I'm sorry. I thought there were 20 people in steel. I don't know anymore. Who knows? No, he would be 20th. because So he's last. It's just there are fewer people and he is still last. Okay. That is, you know, that makes sense because <laughs> I was towards the bottom before and it's just people you're leave. not dead, which is better than everyone else. Yeah. You know, <laughs> joining an organization and doing literally no work for six months after your first job or second <laughs> job doesn't look very good. Does not reflect well in your record. Well, they know that sometimes people get lost and they're missing for a long period of time so they give them time to come back before they take them off uh, very generous of them very generous All right. Uh, so he joined the rest of the party to uh, turn in the quest they're literally already there hold on I gotta play the traditional hello hello welcome back to the information desk it's great to see everybody sort of anyway what can I do for you we're back and alive and with oh. a map huh that's surprising. I thought, yeah, okay, never mind. All right, so let me see what you got here. Uh, well, we have, um, it'll turn in, um, both math. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? What? Um, I'm sorry. What What happened to your map exactly? Uh, well. Why, why is there such a tiny one? Re- re- what? Is this like a painting or something? I don't understand. Oh, you see, well, this is uh, the full map. And then, well, we, we try to make a bigger map, but it's... You know, time got away from us. It's been over a week, and well, this she is br- this is a filled-in part of those parts. She brushes the right part of her hair to the side. Ah, all right. So, let's see. Your mission was to finish up mapping up the area, and I'm only seeing the majority of this one is only seventy percent done. <laughs> oh, that's a little awkward. But this one's really tiny and really well done. It's also a hundred percent. So, I mean. <sighs> I mean, you could just have the small one, or you could have both. Uh, All right, and who has returned with you? Let's see. Oh, I see you're missing a partner. Did he die? Uh, actually, I'm so sorry uh, for he, your loss. Uh, I to, to everyone else's disappointment, I'm sure. 
You hear uh, he is Cassie every... and Valen are laughing in the background. Oh, I uh, thought you were going to say that everyone else in the Seeker base was cheering, Finally, Smoot's dead! <laughs> that curmudgeon bastard! <laughs> <laughs> People start throwing a party in the cafeteria. Smoot uh, walks up and dies immediately. Uh, Charles Grumpley Smoot is uh, very much alive. Oh, well then, that's um rather unfortunate. I mean... Very fortunate. <laughs> All right. Ah, fine. I'll give you the full reward. Congratulations for completing another quest. You have the token with you. Kelsey has him. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Okay, perfect. Give me one moment, please. She walks off to the back, taking your maps with her. Mm -hmm. You see, she goes to the back room and then comes back with a little hefty pouch of silver that she places on the table. And let's see. Ah, oh, yes. Guinevere, you should be ranking up soon. You really? are very far behind, I see. Ah, uh, yes. I was uh, visiting with some family and uh, time got away from me. Did you get married? Was that what that was that uh, like your honeymoon? Six uh, months? No. Um, uh, I was uh, with my grandfather. On your honeymoon? No, no, no. I'm well, no not matter. A I really don't I'm care. Single. So head on out. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> How much money did we get? Well, when Finnevere checks, he can uh, we, find we go out. go to a table and count it up. Do you sit down and like count out your your? Yeah. Okay. You find four hundred and forty silver pieces in the bag. All right. I'm counting it as a level seven, uh, severe encounter for treasure. Shouldn't there be like a debriefing or something? Uh, is there a place for us to, you know, warn them about things? Or is it just the, from the details on the map? It's whatever you put on that map. A big monkey nest. Die here. You can always walk back over. There is no line currently. Oh, yeah. No, no yeah, I guess. Um, you all walk right. Back over. Um, we should hello, probably. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the information disco. You're back. What do you want now? Well, we found a lot of really crazy stuff on that last day. Did, did you put it on the map? Well, there's things that you just don't fit on a map. It takes a lengthy explanation. Well, doesn't that just take away from the adventure? <laughs> <laughs> and you understand. No, 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 no. I need to know if she's just being impatient with me <laughs> or being genuine. This is a huge difference. And you now might understand why only a third of the Steel Tear Seekers survived. <laughs> <laughs> that just digs away from the fun yeah, of She just drove them off and went or killed them. <laughs> she through. burned their tapestry. You already turned in the map, so whatever you put on there is what we've got. Are you sure? Because there were like a lot of power cores there. And I figured. Come again? There were a lot of power cores there. And also things that can send you through time. Did you put it on the map? We put laboratory there. All right. So you didn't put it on the map then so there's your problem and this is why people go in and die you guys don't put any keys or anything look at this she goes back pulls out the map this is the shoddiest done map i've ever seen there's no key on this one this beautiful drawing i feel like i should just frame it i don't know what to do with it i'm pretty proud of that oh did you do it no i'm proud of the person who drew it you know what you show me a better map and i will make sure that all maps in the future are done to Standard of quality. Show you a better map. All right. Okay. So you want a better map then? Yep. One's with the, 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 the notes. With the notes? Yeah. All right. Fine. I'll be right back. She walks off, comes back a minute later. She has a bin of maps. All better than ours. All right. Let's <laughs> see what we're up against. All right. So she starts pulling out maps and you can see some of them do have keys on them and that there's information. You guys put keys but you can see that other people marked like potential cash here and some indicated danger zone literally just danger zone i mean we said big monkey <laughs> she's oh, just boy. being very particular the maps aren't necessarily better than yours it's just she's just being particular so it sounds like they're actually having an argument so he's like <laughs> this was very helpful thank you there will be improved maps in the future well of course it was very helpful Gosh! Because you're very helpful. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the back corner, you just see Valen and Kelsey are leaning over, looking 
in your direction as you turn away and start walking towards them, and they immediately turn away and start counting coins again. Very strange sexual tension between <laughs> these two. So as you walk over to the table, so uh, what was that? The stuff here is very helpful. Do I <laughs> <laughs> We gotta make a map next time. The next time we make a map, it's gonna be the best dang map we've ever made. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but that was amazing. Finvir never gets cross, and that was great. <laughs> it's hard on himself. He has to be. <laughs> He's gotta be important one day. Meanwhile, in the basement, Musa has been. He literally called over the rest of the younger scientists who all have clipboards, and they're all walking around taking notes. It's like being in a hospital with a bunch of newbie doctors. Yep, yep. And so he's been walking around being like, lift your arms up. All right, perfect. Now you see how he has a wingspan of about approximately the full body length of about five foot ten. All right. And so he's literally just going over. They're trying to like draw Pal kind of poses and covers himself, feeling a little um, overwhelmed. You can't just treat him like an animal in a cage. Like he, he has feelings, you know. Right, 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 right. And you're just an animal in a cage, Charles. Uh, so, um, Pal... Pal, that's a very strange name. All right. He pulls out his glasses, literally just takes them off his face. Oh, that's a lot better. As he's just looking at Pal. Anyway, do you guys go back downstairs after some time? Uh, we, we would have to go downstairs. We need to offload relics. Sure. So, you guys head back downstairs and you see mm-hmm. that there is a large posse of people all around Pal and Charles. Oh. All right. Who wants to take bets on how much trouble Smoot's gotten into? Ah, uh, I don't know. Was it any more than what you had going upstairs? You sure mm. you don't want to talk about it? I mean, a little frustrated. We could have done better on the map. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys are walking down the stairs, and then you finally approach over the group. Ah, we're back. We got money. Oh, money. I like the sound of money. Uh, we divided it up evenly between everybody, so... uh. Yeah, he- here's your share. All right, thank you. And she hands you 110 silver. Um, M- Musa, you seem very distracted with my good friend here. Additionally, um, additionally, um, you guys are also going to get 80 XP for completing your mission. Yeah, we would also turn in our, our relics to the, the, the mob. Yep, so any of the ones that you have that are functioning, you will gain 10 more silver on top of that. So each of us should get an additional 30 silver. Uh, except for Finn, who will get 20 because he's only oh, trying right. He's it. keeping his yeah, pen. It's true. Yeah. He's keeping his pen. Do- and his doll. You know you could give her away as a gift. I have an idea about that. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. I know who you would give it to. Okay. As you guys are in the archive, you hear as the gate once again activates behind you. You are currently at a table, kind of passing in your relics. Pal is looking around at them, and Moose is trying to get him to walk off to the side away from the relic table out of his fear. But the gate activates, and you see as Eden steps through. She appears frustrated, and she sees you all. She smiles a little bit, but begins walking past you, momentarily stopping and looking at Pal, looking him up and down. Smoot would turn to address her as she walks by. If now is not too terrible of a time, uh, we may have potentially uplifting news. The first time in a while, I genuinely think we may have made progress. Well, I certainly hope the news you have is good, Charles. Because what I have found is something that could ruin us all. And that is where we're going to end off on this session of the Gage Chronicles. Progress! Future! So, thank you, Foundlings, for listening to another episode of the Gage Chronicles. We're glad that you could join us. And you know what we didn't do at the beginning of this? We didn't tell them about how wonderful and awesome we are! (laughs) Can we give them a call to action for this episode? Oh, 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 ladies and gents, what what, what do we want from our audience this week? What do you think, Jaden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to come to our Discord and drop us a line. Uh, maybe we can have a place to have for them to ask questions. Is there already a? We have that. For- yeah. So definitely, if you check the video description, uh, wherever you are, whether it's on YouTube or I believe we also can do it in Spotify, can't we? If you have 
the podcast app of your choice and you click that description that says like read more, there's a link tree link. Ooh. And inside that link tree link, there's a bajillion other links. Oh, oh that's gosh. way too many. But that's... listen, there's a very important link. There's a Discord link in there. You can join our Discord. You know what Discord is? Discord is an amazing program where you can chat, hang out with us and, you know, the future. Ask questions of people like Finnevere Avere and Charles Smoot. And let us know your favorite part of the podcast, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see in the future. Or if you don't feel like joining our Discord and you're already watching on YouTube anyways, just feel free to leave us a YouTube comment. And I promise we will respond to every comment. In fact, you know what? The number one goal is to get Charles Smoot to become Professor Smoot for another episode. You got you to give him a question, though. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I he, needs a, he needs a question to answer. You, preferably a biology question. Oh, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Quentin prefers comp sci questions or uh, math PG-13 questions. PG-13 questions. PG-13 questions. All right. I think that's it from us, foundlings. So we will see you on the next installment of The Gate Chronicles next, next week. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.